Okay, here's the last, the lesson for chapter one of the Grade 11 Functions course. This is section 1.7, solving a linear quadratic system. So, what we're going to do in this section is learn how to figure out the points of intersection of where a line and a parabola meet. So, these are the steps to do it. If you want, read them through now, but just briefly in summary, you're going to have two equations, one of a line, one of a parabola. You're going to set them equal to each other, rearrange to set equal to zero, solve for x either by factoring or quadratic formula, and then once you have the x values, um, you'll have either 0, 1, or 2 of them. Plug them back into either of the original equations to find the corresponding y values, and you have your points at the intersection. Okay, so like I said, there are three possibilities when you solve a linear quadratic system. Um, the line and the parabola could intersect at two spots, and this is called a secant line. And if you wanted to check um, without actually solving the whole system, and you just want to know how many solutions you're going to have, you can use your quadratic formula once you have your... Um, equations set equal to each other and then set equal to zero, you can check the discriminant. If the discriminant is greater than zero, you're going to get two solutions, meaning that the line is a secant line to the parabola, meaning that it intersects at two spots. If the discriminant is equal to zero, that means you'd only get one solution, which means that the line is a tangent line to the parabola. So it only touches the parabola at one spot. If the discriminant is less than zero, meaning a negative number, you would get no solutions, meaning that the line and the parabola never cross. So let's do a couple examples. Um, <clears throat> here's our first example. The first one, I believe it's going to be a secant line for us, so we're going to get two points of intersection. Um, but let's go ahead and solve this one. So step one, um, so we have equation of a parabola, equation of a line. Step one is to set those two things equal to each other. So three x squared, minus 16x plus 37. So we're going to set them equal to each other, and then we're going to figure out what values of x make the equations equal to each other, and that will tell us where they intersect. So we need to now solve for x. What values of x make these equations equal to each other? So in order to solve a quadratic, um, we're going to need to set it equal to 0. So I'm going to bring my 8x and my 1 to the other side. So I have 3x squared minus 16x. I'm going to bring this 8x over and put it by this, the negative 16x because they're like terms. So minus 8x plus 37 minus 1. And keep in mind this is now equal to 0. There's nothing left on the right side of the equation. Now I'm going to collect my like terms. Minus 24x plus 35. <clears throat> so now I have a quadratic <clears throat> that, um, oh sorry, I knew something was wrong here, um, that 37 should be a 37 here which makes this a 36, okay, 37 minus 1 which is 36, I must have done the 37 minus 1 in my head and put 36 there, but anyways, okay, so now I have a quadratic, it's set equal to 0, I can solve, I could use quadratic formula for sure, um, but in this case, this quadratic is factorable, so I can solve by factoring, that'll save us some time. Step one, check for a common factor. Uh, three goes into all three of the numbers, so let's take out a three. Oh, so I need to divide all three of these terms by the three I took out. So I divided three x squared by three got x squared, divide 24 by three, you get eight, divide 36 by three, you get 12. Now, I, I would divide this 3 to the other side so that it's gone. 0 divided by 3 is 0. So I just have x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals 0. Now, I can factor this um, quadratic. Find two numbers who have a product of 12, a sum <clears throat> of negative 8. And those two numbers are negative 6 and negative 2. Negative 6 and negative 2 add to negative 8, multiply to 12. So my factors are x minus 6 and x minus 2. Now, set both of those factors equal to 0 and solve. And then I will have the two x values of where the line and the quadratic, uh, the line and the parabola cross, where they intersect. So my first x value of the point of intersection is 6. The second x value where they intersect is 2. So I know the x values where they intersect. There are two points of intersection. They intersect when x is 6 and when x is 2. 
last step is we need to now find the y coordinates of the points of intersection by taking those x values of 6 and 2 and plugging them back into either of my original equations to find the corresponding y value. You should get the same answer either way. So let's do point of intersection number 1 using the first x coordinate I found, 6. So point of intersection number 1, I'm going to plug it back into the linear equation because the, the arithmetic is going to be simpler. So y equals 8 times 6 plus 1. y equals 48 plus 1, which is 49. So my first point of intersection is 6, 49. When x is 6, y is 49. That's my first point of intersection. My second point of intersection, I'm going to use my second x coordinate I solved for. So y equals 8 times 2 plus 1. There we go. Um, y equals 17. So my second point of intersection is 2 comma 17. So the line is a secant line to the parabola um, because it has two points of intersection, 649 and 217. <clears throat> and like I said before, um, you could have, after setting them equal to each other, after we had this here, 3x squared minus 24x plus 36, so after they were set equal and then set to zero, we could have used the discriminant to verify that we would get two solutions. So we could have done b squared minus 4ac, so negative 2 squared minus 4 times 3 times 36, got a positive number, and that would have verified that we would in fact get two solutions. Um, we're actually going to kind of go through that process for this next example. So for example two, part A asks us not to solve the linear quadratic system, but to state how many points of intersection um, there would be for these two equations. So what we have to do is just check the discriminant. So we first have to set the two equations equal to each other. So a half x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals 4x minus 10. Then set to 0 and collect like terms, so plus 2x minus 4x minus 8 plus 10. This is now equal to 0. Um, minus 2x plus 2 equals 0. Uh, another thing I would do here before I check the discriminant, so I don't want to have to work with fractions, is I'm going to common factor out that half and then divide it to the other side to eliminate it. So I'm going to divide everything by a half, negative 2 divided by a half. Dividing by a half is the same as multiplying by 2. So minus 4x plus 4 equals 0. So I get, if I divide that half over, it's gone. x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 0. Now we just have to check the discriminant. I'll do that in a different color. Um, so I'll make a note. We're going to check the discriminant. And we're going to check if it's equal to 0, greater than, or less than 0. So b squared minus 4ac, in this case, is equal to negative 4 squared minus 4 times an a value of 1 times our c value of 4. That gives us 16 minus 16, which equals 0. Therefore, it's only going to have one point of intersection. Part B asks us to actually solve, find, it wants us to find the point of intersection. So what we could do, since we already know what the discriminant is going to be equal to, it would be pretty easy to use the quadratic formula because we could just plug 0 in for the b squared minus 4ac part. Or if you want to, you can factor the quadratic and solve by factoring, it's up to you. But we've already done a lot of the work. I'm just going to take this part here, x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 0. And I'm going to solve that. That's already been simplified. Let's solve this for x. So we could find two numbers that, so like I said, we could use quadratic formula. I like factoring better, so especially if it's factorable. So um, two numbers that multiply to 4, add to negative 4 are negative 2 and negative 2. <clears throat> so that would give me x minus 2 times x minus 2, which is equal to x minus 2 squared which equals 0. So the only way that this could be equal to 0 is if the x minus 2 was equal to 0, and therefore x would have to equal 2. So the x coordinate of my point of intersection is 2. So that means the y, so my POI number 1, there's only going to be 1. The x coordinate is 2, 
the y coordinate, I would just have to plug 2 back into either of my original equations. I'll plug it back into g at x. So I'll solve for g at 2 equals 4 times 2 minus 10. And I get g at 2 equals 8 minus 10, which is negative 2. So my point of intersection is at 2, negative 2. <clears throat> okay, the last example I'm going to do uh, is a bit of an application type of question. It's going to test your knowledge of parabolas and lines. Um, if a line has a slope of 4, oh, sorry, if a line with a slope of 4 has one point of intersection, so it's a tangent line, so if a line has a slope of 4 and is tangent to the quadratic y equals a half x squared plus 2x minus 8, what is the y-intercept of the line? So you're going to have to remember that the equation of the line is y equals mx plus b. And in this case, it gives us m, but does not give us b. And it also tells us that it is a tangent line to this quadratic, meaning that the discriminant must equal 0 for it to be a tangent line, because tangent lines only have one point of intersection. So let's start off here. Um, the equation of our line has a slope of 4, so it's going to be y equals 4x plus our y-intercept. I'm going to use k, actually, in this case, because you'll see why. When we start working with the discriminant, there's a b-value in the discriminant. I don't want to get that confused with the y-intercept, so I'll use k. And my quadratic is y equals a half x squared plus 2x minus 8. Okay, <clears throat> I need to solve what the y-intercept of this line is going to be that will make the line the quadratic only have one point of intersection, meaning what value of k would make the discriminant be equal to 0. So step 1, let's set these equations equal to each other. So I have um, a half x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals 4x plus k. Now set it to 0, a half x squared plus 2x minus 4x minus 8 minus k equals 0. Let's simplify what we can. So I have a 2x minus a 4x, that's a negative 2x. And then I can't simplify minus 8 minus k because k is a variable. What I know now, so I wouldn't be able to solve this, but what I do know <clears throat> is that if it is going to have one solution, the discriminant has to be equal to 0. So I need to figure out what value of k would make the discriminant, what would make b squared minus 4ac equal to 0. I'm going to set the discriminant equal to 0 and solve for k. So keep in mind, here's a, here's b, and this whole thing here is my c value. So b squared, so negative 2 squared minus 4 times my a value times my c value of negative 8 minus k, that whole discriminant has to be equal to 0 for it to have one solution if it's a tangent line. Now I need to solve for k. k is the only variable in this equation. Let's solve for it. Negative 2 squared is 4 minus 4 times a half. Well, half of 4 is 2, so minus 2 times negative 8 minus k equals 0. Now distribute the negative 2 into the brackets. Negative 2 times negative 8 is positive 16. Negative 2 times negative k is positive 2k equals 0. 20 plus 2k is 0. 2k equals negative 20. k equals negative 10. So the y-intercept of a line that is tangent to the parabola is negative 10. So the equation of the line is y equals 4x minus 10 is tangent to the parabola. And that's it for that type of question. So if we're looking for the y-intercept of a tangent line, you have to remember tangent lines only have one point of intersection with the parabola, meaning the discriminant must be equal to 0. All right, and that's it for that section. Make sure you go to jensenmath.ca and try out the worksheet.